Yo, I will not be appearing on screen. I'm just going to give you a quick review of a game we just got through playing called Outriders. The demo dropped not too long ago. We were playing it over at my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash younger59. You should follow me over there and catch some of the streams. But we were playing and we had uh, quite a bit of fun, if I can be completely honest with you guys, playing it. When I first heard about this game, it was through one of my followers, actually the follower that I ended up playing this game with cooperatively. And of course, you know, I'm in two games that have RPG elements, but are also online um, of different genres. That's right up my alley, though, if I can play if it's some sort of RP online RPG. That's what I'm into. So once I heard that Outriders was a game that you can play entirely cooperatively, that piqued my interest. So I wanted to get in on the demo. The game wasn't out or is not out yet. Um, I believe we're like a month out, but they did give us a demo, which is uh, around like three hours of gameplay. Um, I believe is what, what it is. And yeah, I wanted to make sure I got in on it and I wanted to cover it for you guys. So if you are kind of on the fence, of course, you can get the demo for free of no cost. You can't play it yourself, but I wanted to give you guys my thoughts. So uh, just for complete transparency, I did play this game on the PlayStation 5. Once I found out that it was uh, cross-platform instead of playing it on PC, I wanted to play it on my PlayStation 5. And I didn't have much problems out of it aside from it crashing one time. Um, I didn't have many issues, no frame drops, even with a lot of enemies playing, or rather in the playing area as well as uh, another play person, a human that was playing as well. Didn't have much issues. So all the gameplay that you are seeing will be me playing it over at Twitch. So the gameplay is my own. So keep that in mind. Let's get into it. The best way that I can describe this game is it's a third person sort of action shooter RPG from the gameplay. There isn't really a fair direct comparison, but because of its pacing and the fact that it's third person, people will compare it to like Gears of War because of the different abilities. It'll be compared to Destiny because of some of the RPG aspects. It'll be compared to Destiny and like games like Division. Just understand that it's not a direct comparison to either of those games. But before we get into the actual gameplay, let's talk about the story in the world. I know some of you guys are into that big time. Now, in Outriders, Earth as we know it is no more. I believe in 2032, they say that Earth started having a series of like environmental sort of problem seismic shifts and by 2091 it seems that the earth has no life on it and you are part of two ships that really set out to go to a planet called enoch to find a new home to really settle of course that's though when you get there it hits the fan and as the planet has some of these anomalies which inevitably creates rifts among earth survivors which leads to war sort of like what you were dealing with already on Earth. And you are part of a team known as the Outriders, which is basically a bunch of hand-picked specialists by way of the leaders of the Enoch Colonization Authority, the ECA. And they are, of course, the governmental body that facilitated this expansion to Enoch. When you first get there, you're responsible for making sure that the landing area is all good, they can go there and, and settle and whatnot and of course it wasn't the anomalies among other things is exactly what granted you your powers and it also kills other peoples and people don't quite know why so it gives some folks power some people it actually destroys them who knows as to why you're kind of figuring that along the way you are one of the anointed ones that ended up getting powers and at some point once it does hit the fan, you are frozen in this Cairo chamber for like 31 years and you come back to a war and only a couple of living outriders still being alive. So the point seems to be to utilize your newly found gifts to figure out what's going on around Enoch and let's say bring balance to this this world and this new settlement. The character model customization before you get into everything, I will tell you right from the get go is very lackluster and very, very basic. So if you thought you were going to be spending a lot of time, which is what I thought, forget about it. There's not much time to spend. There's only a select few amount of different kind of customizations you have there. I'm assuming that this is because your character will be wearing a lot of headgear and other armor. 
Uh, but you get to select your class after a bit into the intro, which is you basically selecting what kind of altar. That's what they call the people that get these sort of godlike abilities. You call the altar, then you get to select what kind of powers you have. There are a total of four different classes of powers, and I selected the Trickster, which is a class that focuses on close quarters combat and utilizes slowing of time. You get to unlock, I believe, eight special class skills while equipping like three or four at a time. I believe it's three actually. The demo only allows you to unlock four though. But it was a bit epic to see those powers first utilized. If you go watch my Twitch stream, I was like freaking out because it was really sick to see those powers in action. And this is what you need to understand with this game. Unlike some other shooters that have like abilities outside of the gunplay the thing that sets this game apart is the fact that the abilities are such a big part of the game just as much if not more than the gun play you get even more uniqueness and customization when it comes to your skills as well when you apply those different class points that specifically impacts some of them so as you would expect in an rpg there will be differentiation between your trickster and mine now your inventory system in the demo is about what you would expect you get to equip two primary weapons and a sidearm. They differ in rarity, and some of them can impact how you play the game and your abilities with uh, the perks that they have on them. The same can be said with the armor in which you have five slots in terms of body part. And yes, armor does change the fact, uh, or rather how your character look. Armor and guns can also be bought and sold. They can be dismantled for resources even before you pick them up which is pretty cool that can also be found after defeating certain enemies and as rewards after completing certain missions and you get to actually select so you may get a choice of let's say three guns and you can select the one that works for you now getting into the quest map you can see all of the quest some of which you'll be able to see at your camp and it also lets you know like if that area has a place where you can pick up certain quests um, and they're all in kind of different areas or settlement areas in Enoch, which seem to be expanding as you go uh, further into the story. You can collect these quests from NPCs that you interact with, but don't expect this to be some like vast open world. Sure, you're running around, but the traversal is just that you sprinting around. The world isn't like that big and the areas aren't that either. So don't expect to get lost and like these different sort of vast like open world um, aspects. There's no like cars that you're gonna be driving in. I guess you can say it kind of encourages you to, you to explore to see if you can find a chest or mine um, for something, but it's not like that incredibly vast. Also, as you're collecting these missions and quests, you'll get some dialogue options. I just wanted to bring this up, but there's only like one that actually advances the conversation. None of them seem to really impact your gameplay or anything like that. It's just kind of a, a gimmick, which a lot of RPGs do. And for you trophy hunters and completionists out there, there are a bunch of accolades and some of them you seem to get rewards from. And the last menu thing that I want to bring up and really get into are the world tiers, which is interesting. Now, you're able to select and unlock different tiers, which impacts your gameplay we only get to see like four or five world tiers in the demo but as you can see they increase the level of like enemies while also impacting the drop rates of certain um, item tiers if you don't want to worry about it you can have it locked on the highest tier available and uh, lastly because you can't collect certain resources there's obviously going to be some sort of crafting element or aspect but we don't get to see that in the demo okay Let's talk about gameplay and who this game is for. The game can be played entirely in single player or co-op, which seems to be an approach that a lot of games are going in a direction. Rather, they're going in in the future, um, trying to capture both markets. This isn't always the best of ideas when implemented because it can make a game severely dumbed down because it's not good at any one thing because it's trying to dip in so many uh, different markets. Now, I personally got the game specifically because it was co-op. I'm a co-op guy. There doesn't look like there will ever be any PVP, which is fine, but the game does play differently. I will say this. 
solo versus having other people, uh, which is interesting. I wonder if they're going to keep that up, if that is going to be something that's going to be passed, because it was so it was even on the same like tier. It was way easier uh, playing by yourself as opposed to playing with with other other people. So that was kind of interesting in terms of how that impacts I'm not against that, I guess, because me playing cooperatively, I want that element to really be a focus of the game that I'm playing. Not that it's just some brainless kind of thing. It doesn't have to be any communication or anything. If I'm going through it, I'd rather have it be more difficult, which forces me to have to think. And it's not some like mindless thing. But like I said, keep that in mind. The game does play differently if you're playing solo versus if you're playing with other people. This is a game that wants you to play aggressive and fast. That's indicative in how fast your abilities, like a cool down. Um, it's also in the fact that you heal as you're killing enemies and some certain perks and, and skills seem to impact how much. And, and even in your class, like, hey, you're focusing on more so close range combat. If you kill an enemy that's close to you, then your health heals by this much. So that's built into the game. It's like a, a core of the game. Now, I was afraid, though, that this was going to be a problem and make the game like too easy. Um, at least in the demo, it wasn't much of a struggle playing it solo. But like I said, when I started playing duos with another person, the difficulty clearly changed. So it seems like they did a solid job trying to change the experience depending on how you're playing. Once there was a clear difficulty increase, it wasn't simply in the fact that the enemies became sponges. Yes, some enemies are going to be stronger than others others that should be expected but it was more so in the amount of enemies and their location on, on the battlefield and even how powerful they were i can see where they're going to need to be some like high levels of communication if you are playing with other people in certain spots but it was awesome to see my teammates abilities like be used alongside mine that is a really really cool part of the game it makes for some really awesome gameplay now the gunplay on the game is pretty pretty sick but the game really shines in the fact that you can combine that with the abilities teleporting behind someone as a trickster and then shotgunning them in the back never got old it is going to be interesting to see how the world tiers do impact the gameplay further into like the game and certainly the post game or uh, post campaign content it has a little bit of depth when you combine the gameplay with the different classes and the skills and the perks. But what I've learned, which is interesting, it's kind of a side note, I will say, is that some people actually don't like that, which is weird to me. They'd much rather have something that is far more simple in their like RPGs. But for guys like me, I like depth. That's king. Depth is king. And the tough, like, let's say, exercise or, uh, or thought exercise, rather, of coming up with these different builds and like going up against different enemies like that's part of the experience for me especially when you're trying to coincide all of this and communicate this with your teammate i'm going into battle with this like that's that's the awesome part but again the game does give you options if you want to just play on basic difficulty and fly through it and move on to the next game it looks like you're going to be able to do that but to me this game is going to shine in the cooperative experience now my main criticism i will say of the gameplay that i have is how grounded the game is the more I played it, I will say that I understood why they went in that direction, but there's no crouching outside of getting behind cover and you can only mount over objects. You can't like jump. There's no jump button um, or even really fall off the map in some areas. So it feels like it kind of boxes you in a little and it doesn't allow for the greatest freedom of movement. I do understand. Yes, if you add like aerial aspects, it has a different mechanic into the game. Um, but if you can get used to it, 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 it doesn't get like entirely in the way of the style of game. It just makes you think like if they added that, yes, it would add a different aspect and another element to the game. But that clearly wasn't something that they wanted to focus on. As far as just my closing thoughts on actually playing this game and I played it live. You can go see the vibe over at Twitch. Like I said before, it's uh, it's an automatic buy for me. I think this is something that I am going to have some fun and I will say that if you are looking for kind of just this single player kind of narrative driven experience, I don't think this is going to be the game for you if you are in the RPGs. And certainly if you like the games like Destiny um, and, and Division, then I think this will be a game that that you'll be into, um, certainly with the ability aspect of, of, of this game, which 
is what makes this game what it is. And when you play with other people, I cannot stress that enough. I think this game really is going to shine there. If you play with other people, it's just a different gameplay experience. Now, you can say that for virtually every single game, but I think this game, they really wanted to focus on making it a, a, an awesome co-op experience that you can do single player. But I will say, because it's not so driven by that, if you're expecting just this very kind of linear game to play uh, from from a single player aspect, I think because it it doesn't it doesn't focus so much on that. I think you're going to be missing out, or uh, if you don't play a cooperative, if it, cooperatively, excuse me, or if you are more of a single player kind of guy and you do pick up and let's say play this game, I think I can find some aspects where you're going to really think that it's shallow and pales in comparison to some of those um, other games. But it's an automatic buy for me. I think this is a perfect game because of the fact that it's a cross-platform game. I, I like to do community days. Y'all saw me when I did that with like, uh, you know, Avengers and other games. Uh, so I want to play with my community and stuff like that. And because it will be cross-platform and your your um, if you did have a question about this in the demo, yes, your your stuff carries over into the final game. So you'll pick up where you left off, which is awesome. But again, you can play other or with other people that are on PC, on PlayStation 5 or whatever. And to me, that's what it's all about. I love that. And I'm glad that they went that route. So I'm interested to see what they're going to do with this. Um, my only fear, not this isn't necessarily a criticism, but I, I will say that I have a fear despite me having a lot of fun with this game. Is that it's too quick to beat, too quick to fall, uh, fall through, uh, or rather go through all of those like uh, tears and all of that sort of stuff. I hope that's not what we get. I hope there's that that gameplay loop is is a lot of depth to it because this is not a live service game by any means. So what you play is what you're gonna get. Maybe there'll be some DLC and maybe it'll move in a direction if this is something that the community really does enjoy or rather it has a hardcore community. Maybe they end up moving in order to consistently add gameplay, maybe even new abilities, new kind of uh, altered like that. That whole altered thing is just such a sick part of this game. And that could be expanded on even more like they could actually, let's say, expand on the different amount of abilities because one of the alter that you fight for example has like this sort of electromagnetic ability which it doesn't seem any of the alter that you can control actually has anything like that so you can imagine they can add that stuff to the game so it could adopt the model of okay either a paid dlc or maybe in like a subscription and they really want to embrace like a more mmo kind of um, aspect of the game but that that's all going to be determined by the community i do like what they did and i wish a lot of other games expanded um, on making these sort of live response action rpgs not not like okay there's no weight to anything it is that you're doing i like that this is what we're getting and we're, we're starting to get creative they're they're trying to to see how they can bridge the gap and giving you that sort of experience that you expect the depth that you expect in a single player game putting it online that's what i want to see more of so you may like the game um if you are into those sort of cooperative rpg elements definitely if you like third person shooters and like again uh, akin to so sort of uh, gears or the, the the division and if you like the whole abilities in, a, in your rpg maybe uh, like destiny i think this will be a game that you can at least get into we'll see so it's an automatic buy for me i'll be looking forward to playing it and keeping you guys updated on my experience i'll be playing it over at twitch once it comes out hope you enjoyed this uh video and a little breakdown of the demo and until next time y'all be easy peace